Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be taking a look and testing out Hay Bikes, brand new bike. It's called the Hay Bike Tyson. It has dual suspension as you guys can see, which is a first for Hay Bike. Usually they include a rear suspension seat, but this one actually has a rear suspension. It has also a hydraulic suspension front fork. And this is a class three 28 mile per hour e-bike. Now, with that being said, there is a sticker on the side that says class three. There is an awesome feature in the app, which I'll get into in a little bit. And there is some settings in there that allows you to adjust the pedal assist levels and the speed. But for some reason, those settings are not working in the app. So as of now, you cannot adjust each pedal assist level. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and say that I have been in contact with Hay Bike back and forth a few different emails about the user settings not working in the app. They said that they did work and the problem was that this was such an early test model that the hardware in the display was not compatible with the newest firmware update because they can send updates over the air, which is pretty awesome. They are sending me another display to try out and hopefully it corrects those issues. If it does, like I said, I'll update you guys down in the comments, make another video, a short or something to let you guys know how that worked out. Let's get back to it. Because it's really cool in the app what you can do with it. And that is that it has an anti-theft feature. This bike has 4G capability, which means it will connect via cell phone towers to 4G. And you can go on and track your bike. You can see where it's at at all times. As long as it has a battery installed, the bike does not have to be turned on. And you can go in and see where your bike's at It'll alert you if the bike gets tapped. It'll alert you on your screen that it has moved. And then you can also set up like a geofence for different areas like 10 meters, I think up to 50 meters. If your bike moves outside of that range, it will alert you as well, which is awesome. Awesome feature to have. Now, with that being said, I did reach out to them and ask them if they were gonna require a monthly subscription and they were looking into it. Hopefully there is no subscription because I've seen with other things like certain power stations that have that feature, they do charge you a monthly fee to access that 4G, but that's an awesome feature, guys. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in real quick Hey bike did get back to me before releasing this video so i wanted to give you an update they did confirm with me that the gps function of the bike was only active for one year and then after that year you will have to pay a yearly subscription and they confirmed with me that it was going to be 69 dollars a year which isn't too bad i guess for a gps function so just keep that in mind if you do want to purchase this bike solely based on that feature alone just know that after the first year there will be a fee and then i'm not sure if that fee is always going to stay that i mean you never know guys it could be changed they were actually unsure initially when i asked them how much they were going to charge because it's fairly new out but as of now 69 dollars per year and they did also send me another display and now the pedal assist levels are adjustable you can make it whatever speed you want right through the app which is really nice however the throttle limited mode that was right above the pedal assist levels it actually looks like in the app that you could change it so your throttle is either tied to your pedal assist levels or it's not however that's not the way it works whenever you adjust your pedal assist modes for the speeds your throttle is limited to your speed as well and then when you change that mode you do have full throttle in all your pedal assist levels but you also don't really have that limitation on the pedal assist levels so you get full speed no matter what pedal assist level you're in that would have been nice for them to keep it so that it kept your pedal assist settings but gave you full throttle. Hopefully they can update that in the future. But anyways, it's definitely better than all the other Hay Bikes adjustability with the app now that this new display works. Let's get back to it. So the first test I'm gonna do with this bike is go up this hill with throttle only. I have a fully charged battery here. We're gonna hit it in pedal assist five with just throttle and we're gonna see what kind of speed we can maintain. Now this bike does have a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery and a 750 watt motor. So let's see how it does. 750 watt motor should pull me up this hill, no problem. And it does have a 20 amp controller. When I took the controller out and looked, it said 20 amps on it. Seven, six, five, ooh, four, man, three, to oh man guys that's disappointing <sighs> sorry to say hey bike that's disappointing for a 750 watt motor 
it should have pulled me up this hill easily. Actually, this exact spot is where I made it with the electric bikes, the uh, 3.0, and it was at four miles an hour when I made it to this point. I just stopped at around, I think it was like two miles an hour, two to three, and it was struggling. Out of this motor, I would have expected more for 750 watts and 20 amp hours. Now, if you pedal, you can see I could start out there and pedal, just giving it a little bit of effort and make it up this hill no problem. Now I am currently about 175 pounds. If you guys were wondering for this test, so you can see there I pedaled real easily and made it up that, but for 750 watts, I feel like it should have made it up without having to pedal up that hill. And if you guys haven't seen my hill test video where I took 26 different bikes up that hill, make sure you guys check it out because it would be interesting if you don't know what you're looking for in a bike. So now this bike is supposed to top out at 28 miles an hour. We will definitely test that when we get down here onto a straighter stretch. But let's check out the braking of this bike. It has RSX hydraulic disc brakes, which is really nice to see. Great stopping power, no squeaks and squeals. I can lock the back wheel up easily. And it has 180 millimeter rotors, which is really nice to see for stopping this bike. Now you guys notice this frame has a pretty unique design to it and it is made out of magnesium alloy which is lighter than aluminum. Now with that being said, the bike with the battery still comes in weighing 77 pounds. So not too bad overall for having a 15 amp hour battery. Now the rack on the back that my bag's sitting on is a steel rack, it's not aluminum so that's something to keep in mind. And I just had the back brake pulled full throttle and it did not stop me. Not full throttle, full force, and it did not stop me. So I don't know what's going on there, guys. Maybe they need bled out or, and it's locking up now. I'm thinking maybe that back brake just needs bled a little bit. Let's try it again here. I locked it up. I don't know what was going on there, guys. Maybe it just needs adjusting a little bit. Maybe it's the type of brake pads they use. Maybe they were hot, but I don't smell them. It doesn't smell like they overheated or anything. So I have to keep an eye on that here throughout this ride. But see you guys again when I get down to a straight stretch. So one thing I wanna show you is the throttle is limited to whatever pedal assist level you're in. I'm in pedal assist level one right now, full throttle, and I'm only going like five miles an hour. So it is really, really toned down. You can go really, really slow in pedal assist one, which is gonna be nice if you don't wanna go fast. I hate when pedal assist one on some bikes are like 10 to 12 miles an hour. That's just way too fast if you wanna go slow. You can go slow with this bike, really nice there. Nice feature to have. And you can see as I bump up, I have more power with the throttle. Now over here on the left-hand side of the handlebars, you can see there is a switch to turn on your headlight. And it's also turns on automatically. There's a sensor behind the headlight. When it gets dark, that front headlight will turn on automatically as well, which is a really nice feature. This bike does have turn signals, just like the Hey bike city run and below the turn signal you have a nice little horn button there pretty cool feature to have as well so let's just test out these back brakes again here going down this long hill oh yeah I can definitely lock them up there so let me just feather the brakes here coming down here and then we'll hit them again at the bottom and see what happens try to get them nice and hot and I can still lock them up there. So yeah, I don't know what was going on there coming down that hill, guys. They seem to be working great, not really good now. Let's still feather them down this hill here and I'll hit them at the bottom and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I can lock them up, but I, yeah, see, nope, see now they're, now I can't lock them up. So I think once they're getting hot, oh yeah, I could smell them, oh yeah. They're smoking. See them smoking? So yeah, once the brake pads get hot, they don't want to stop you very good. Probably the type of pads they use, that's probably why they're so quiet. They're probably using an organic brake pad, which is very, very quiet. You get no squeaks or squills usually from those pads. However, they do heat up and they do tend to lose some of their stopping power whenever they get wet or uh, whenever they heat up. So it's something to keep in mind. 
if you're not going down long steep hills like that you shouldn't have a problem and i was only using the back brake if i was using the front and the rear brake that would be a lot less strain on that rear brake so just something to keep in mind but yeah you can see there definitely wore in now they were smoking all right let's hit some bumps not bad guys it's actually pretty smooth not bad at all you got that front uh, hydraulic suspension and then the back is slightly springy there's really no adjustment there on the back shock but i was actually just impressed when i hit those bumps that i didn't feel it hardly at all in my butt so really nice on the suspension here guys really really like that i like that you don't have to add an additional three inches or so by using a suspension seat post and you can keep that seat height low if you need it to be. All right, guys, we're coming up to a straight stretch and let's see what kind of speed we can get out of this bike. First, we're gonna do throttle only. I'm in pedal assist five. hope I don't see any deer today that's always scary at these speeds 25 26 27 so yes guys close enough for me to a class 3 27 miles per hour with just throttle only 28 there for a split second shows 28 on the display now let's just pedal and this is how fast you'll be pedaling. 25, 26. So you will have some ghost pedaling here with this 14 to 28 freewheel. Would have been nice of them to use a uh, 11 tooth freewheel in the back. Would have made this ride a lot nicer. Now you guys can upgrade them for probably around 30 bucks plus. Uh, that's if you do it yourself. Plus you have to buy the tool. Uh, I did it on the electric XP. If you guys want to check out that video, if you're interested, you should be able to upgrade it on here. Uh, don't take my word for it, but it's worth giving a try. So yeah, guys, definitely fast at 28 miles an hour. No complaints there. Now let's go find some hills and see how it does up some of those steep hills in town. But first, before we hit those hills, let's go over some of the other specs and features on this hay bike Tyson. So we already talked about the controls over here on the left hand side. We already talked about the RSX brakes with 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear. Over here on the right hand side of the handlebars, you have a thumb throttle and you also have a seven speed Shimano thumb shifter, which leads down to that 14 to 28 freewheel. Like I said, it would have been nice to see an 11 tooth freewheel, especially for this being a class three bike for speeds up to 28 miles an hour. Coming up the chain, you have a 48 tooth chain ring on the front and a nice set of aluminum folding pedals. Right here on the side of the bike, above the latch to open your frame, you have your charging port. You can charge the battery in the bike or take the battery out of the bike to charge it. And what's really cool about this is when you open the frame up, the key actually goes in the battery inside the frame to unlock it and then to pull it out. You don't have any key underneath dangling down or you don't have to have it turned on for the bike to work. The only downfall to that is somebody can hop on this bike and ride away with it. But in the app, you can set it so that as soon as you leave the bike, it does automatically lock and it will unlock whenever it senses your Bluetooth on your phone. You can turn that on and off if you don't want it. And you can turn the bike off or on from the app too, which is kind of cool. So if somebody steals your bike, you could turn the bike off on them. Now they can probably just turn it back on with a button, but you could keep disabling it until you get to it or until you find it, which is pretty cool. All right, so one thing I want to mention real quick about folding this bike is that these wires seem awfully tight because they follow this channel in the center here. And as you fold it, there's really nowhere for the wires to go. If you remove the battery before you fold it, you pull the battery out, then you can see the wires can come up out of that center slot and give you a lot more slack, which makes it easier to fold the bike. It did seem like the wires were awfully tight when the battery was in. Maybe that's with only this model because it's such an early production model, but just pull the battery out and then you can fold the bike. 
And this bike did come with a four amp hour charger, which is amazing. We'll charge that 15 amp hour battery really fast. The battery that I got with this did say max three amp charge. So I questioned them. They told me that the sticker was wrong on this battery. So hopefully that's the case, but really nice that it has a four amp charger. Now this bike is setting on a pair of 20 by four inch WD fat tires and a set of mag rims, which is nice. You don't have to worry about adjusting spokes over time about your, if your spokes get loose. And it has a Shimano Tourney derailleur, which is entry level, but I mean, honestly, on a hub motor, that's pretty much all you need. One thing that I noticed is it does have some nice clamps here to clamp the wires to the frame, not zip ties like a lot of, a lot of other bikes use. The only downfall to this, if you have a problem out on the bike trail, then you have to worry about trying to get screws and stuff out. If you had to remove this back wheel, you would have to at least get this one off so that you can undo that wire. Just something to keep in mind. You can always change that maybe and put a zip tie on there if you're worried about that. But really nice to see the upgrade there instead of just zip ties holding the wires. So here is the rear suspension. I'm not sure exactly how much travel, not a whole lot, maybe a half inch or so. And this rear shock is not adjustable. There is a little bit of spring in it when it bounces, but it's not too bad in my opinion. You could probably update that too if you wanted to in the future. Has a nice steel rack on the back for holding a rear bag. And you guys know this is one of my favorite bags and I also have a new one from Vitalin that's identical to this if you guys are interested. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than this one and it's exactly the same quality. I'll be showing you guys that later in the future. This bike does come with a set of front and rear plastic fenders to keep the uh, dirt off of you while you're riding which is pretty nice now i did notice that this back one seemed just slightly short it does swoop out there so it should help and should prevent most of the stuff from coming up on you but just something i noticed there for safety this bike has a nice running light in the front just like the other hay bike city run that i explored i really like how it lights up hay bike there in the middle of the front and the tail light there's your turn signals for the left and the right there. And you can see if I cover the sensor in the back, the light automatically comes on. So really cool automatic on feature for safety there. And the back light comes on automatically too. When you pull the brake lever, it flashes. Really nice bright lights there, guys. Love those for safety along with the horn. Up here on the front fork, you have your clicks for your adjustments there. If you turn it far enough, you will lock it out. This is hydraulic, which is really nice. Over here, it does show a plus and minus for the preload. Didn't seem like I could spin this very easily, so I'm not sure if that's not really adjustable or not. Just this over here seemed like it was working really well just adjusting it with this side. Typically, I usually don't mess with the preload anyway, to be honest. Now this is a folding four inch fat tire bike, so if you guys wanna transport it easily in back of your vehicle, all you have to do is break it down here with this latch here, break it down at the handlebars here. You can see it breaks down really nice, really compact, easily to transport it in back of your vehicle if you don't have a fat tire bike rack or if you don't want to expose to your elements when you're out on your trip. For seat height here, you have a 32 inch minimum seat height from the ground to the top of the seat when it's all the way down and you can adjust it up to 40 inches for taller riders. And you also have about four and a half inches of adjustability here on the stem. If you're a taller rider, which is nice to see, wire management is really good. Everything's wrapped nice and they have the neoprene cover on the wires like they do on other other models. Not a lot of excessive wiring there. Now, one thing I wanna mention is that this bike does not have mounts up front to put an additional rack or basket on the front. So if you guys are into carrying a lot of gear and that's something you need, then this bike might not be the bike for you. Oh, and I do wanna mention in that first tail test video I did, like I said, it did seem a little lacking for the 750 watt motor, but if you guys have ridden or have the 500 watt Mars or something similar, one of their other 500 watt bikes, this one does definitely have more power than those. And if you guys watch my hill test video, you could see how far I made it on those bikes. All right, so you can see in the app here, I'm at 86% battery level. That's another awesome feature. When you're away from your house, if your bike is charging, which I do not recommend, you should always be home while charging your bikes, but you can go on the app and see what your bike is charged at regardless if it's charging or not. Even if it's not charging, you could be, say, on your way home from work and be like, wonder what my bike's charge is at go on the app and see what it is charged at, which is an awesome feature to have. Couple features in there, turn on to close unlock, turn on to auto lock. So that's a feature where if you get close enough with your phone, your bike will automatically turn on. 
Now, I disabled that because when I had it in my house, every time I'd walk by the bike, the bike would turn on. And sometimes I found it on when I didn't want it to be. But pretty cool, I guess, if you were out riding, you could set that feature. Auto lock, you could set it to lock at a specific time if it doesn't sense your phone nearby. And one other feature I noticed in the app is that you can turn on and off anti-theft. However, I didn't seem to be able to turn it off whenever the battery is installed in the bike. If the bike's off and somebody bumps it, it's gonna alert you on your phone. There was no way currently to turn that setting off. I did mention it to them, so we'll see if that gets updated as well. I particularly don't mind it not being able to be turned off because that's an awesome feature to have in case somebody steals your bike. However, my son likes to mess with me and he goes around and bumps my bike while I'm at work and I get notified on my phone all day when I'm at work that somebody's messing with my bike. So uh, something to keep in mind, hopefully they can update that. And one other feature in the app is lost mode. If you go into there, it will pinpoint where your bike's at on the map. However, it will show you the street names and everything where your bike is, but it does not give you a physical address. You cannot click on it and go to Google Maps or anything like that. So you kind of got to zoom out, figure out where you're at, then go to Google Maps and try to find that same spot. It would have been nice if you could just click on that dot of where your bike is and it reroutes you to one of your mapping systems in your phone to actually take you there. So there is a little bit of work involved. It's not perfect, but at least it does tell you where your bike is if it would get stolen. Now, what I'm really excited for, and hopefully they update in the future, if you go to individual here, you can see where you can set your different levels of assist, zero to three and zero and one to five. Now that does work. You can change it from three to five levels. However, nothing else in here works. The top speed, if you set that, change that, it does not work. If you try to slide the pedal assist speed limit for each level, it just reverts back to zero. And for some reason, those do not work. So if they could get these to work right here so that you can adjust the level of each pedal assist level and be able to adjust your max speed down to 20 miles an hour if you need need to and then your assist strength that doesn't seem to be working either and then there's one other thing here throttle limited it says when it is on the throttle speed will be limited to the max speed in the current pedal assist level it is selected no but it is still limited to the pedal assist level with your throttle that would be awesome as well if you could change that so like i said if they could change these features in the app it's going to be an amazing way to adjust your settings in your bikes especially having that anti-theft feature and being able to see what your battery level is at at all times it's going to be amazing if they can get that to work so i think that's going to be about it for most of the specs and features of the bike but let's get back into it let's go find some bumps maybe some jumps hit those and then hit some more hills and thanks for watching guys if you find this helpful please leave a comment down below it really helps my channel out if you guys are interested in picking one of these up after watching this video there will be affiliate links down below as well as any coupon codes that i can get for you guys to save a few bucks if you use those links it helps support the channel and helps me creating these videos for you so thanks for watching let's get back to it all right let's try out the suspension off some curbs here not bad not too bad pretty good guys Here we go guys, up a pretty steep hill. Let's see how we do. I'm in gear four. Probably need to downshift. It's pulling me up, but I definitely have to pedal. Definitely have to put some effort into it, but not too bad. Let's go hit a different steep hill. All right, this is the steepest one in my town. Let's see how it does on this. Now I'm in first gear. And it's a little difficult. I did start at the very bottom, uh, almost at a stop. I got up it easily one-handed, but it was a pretty good amount of effort for being a 750 watt bike. Like I said, though, definitely more powerful than their 500 watt bikes though, for sure. All right, here we go up the last long hill before I get to my house. I'm in gear number five, pedal assist five, and we'll see how 
hard or how easy it takes me up this now like i say in all my videos that's really hard to describe as far as how much effort i'm putting in but i am putting in a decent bit my legs are actually burning a little bit which is a good burn a good feeling uh definitely good to get this exercise here in the winter time luckily i had a nice enough day to come out and ride it was snowing yesterday and it's supposed to snow again tomorrow but the snow melted because it was a little bit warm today but good burn i did gain about 175 or not 175 i gained about 10 pounds here in the winter normally 165 i'm 175 right now yeah i got a pretty good burn going let's do some throttle only here and show you now i'm already up past the steepest part there you can see i'm dying down now losing some steam just on throttle eight miles an hour almost to the top gonna go ahead give it a little bit of help and i always recommend helping guys help your bike out don't burn nothing out save some battery capacity all right here we go Whew. one thing i noticed the odometer on this bike does not seem to track the miles correctly it's not moving at all the trip meter is moving and i noticed this earlier and i shut the bike off turned it back on and then the miles calculated so i'm gonna go ahead and try that here i shut the bike off it's at five miles i'm gonna turn it back on see now it says seven miles and it reset the trip meter so i'm not sure if it calculates on the trip meter side and then when you shut the bike off it transfers it over to the odometer side that's really odd guys not sure why it would do that that's very strange I, they should just let the trip meter rack up the miles until you go in the app to reset it because there is a setting in the app for you to reset the trip meter so I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit more, but I'm wondering if I ride for a while and then come in here, reset the trip meter, if I shut it off and then turn it back on, if it doesn't register any miles because I reset the trip meter. So, so we are back to the hill that we first went up with a full battery. We are down now to around 69% according to the display. So we're going to take another shot at this hill and see how it does. Now it's not going to make me up because it didn't make it up on a full battery but we'll see how it does all right here we go pedal assist five throttle only it's actually at about 70 percent the battery did creep up a little bit while i was sitting there let's see how it does now 12 miles an hour 11 miles per hour 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 this is about i'd say this is about where i got with the hay bike uh mars limited edition with a full battery till i hit about four miles per hour now it's down to about that power so as your battery decreases obviously your power is going to decrease as well just like in any bike i'm gonna go ahead and start out there now i'm in gear five which is almost the hardest one to pedal still able to walk up this hill starting there from a dead stop pedaling but like i said would have liked to have seen a little bit more power all right so i rode around and i got the trip meter to go up two more miles so dominator's reading seven miles trip meter's reading two miles i'm going to go ahead and reset the trip meter in the app which will reset it on the bike i'm going to shut the bike off and see if that calculates to nine miles because like i said this odometer reading did not move in the last two miles reset trip distance hit that confirm yes it did calculate the mileage so as soon as you hit trip reset it takes the trip miles adds them to the total miles on the bike not too bad just really odd that they would do it like that and in my opinion i would rather see the trip just keep accumulating until you reset it manually not when you shut the bike off and turn it back on 
All right, guys, so I think that's gonna be about it on the Hay Bike Tyson. I hope you guys found this video interesting and helpful. If you did, please make sure you guys leave a comment down below. It really helps me out and consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos, especially those hill test videos I did. I thought they were pretty good and you guys could probably gain a lot of knowledge from them. So thanks for watching. If you guys are interested in any of my accessories as well or this bike, I'll put a link down below to those, all my tried and tested accessories, the ones I love, like the rear rack bags, uh, air tag holders, chain locks, the cell phone holder that I'm using here that I love, absolutely love, just all kind of different accessories. So make sure you guys check those out down below. Thanks for watching. See you around on the next one.